So here is our old friend, R Studio. Maybe not a friend, but okay. So we can um, we can use the command t test, all right? And this is uh, it's very simple. You just plug in x and you plug in y. Or you plug in um, the values from group one and the values from group two, and then you say, do a t-test. Okay. And so, uh, so I know in our uh, examples that we've done in class, I've already presented you with the uh, group mean and the um, group standard deviation. Okay. But generally, when you gather data, you don't have the group mean, okay? So maybe uh, group one consists of some values here, okay? And so this is the toluene groups in, in, the, uh, in the book. We've got So you can you can enter the data manually this way, all right? You probably won't. Um, probably somebody has gathered data in an Excel spreadsheet, okay? And uh, and R has a whole bunch of uh, commands that you can use to import data into uh, into the worksheet. And uh, well, I don't know. We'll see what we get. Okay, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, you know, it's probably a good exercise to, to learn how to how to import data in, into R where it's, it's actually useful, okay? Because you don't want to have to be typing these, retyping these things in yourself, okay? So that you let someone else, um, an intern, type in all the numbers for you, okay? And then so now they give you the worksheet, and then you say, okay, now we put it into R. So anyway, you can, the, so let's say these were the, the values that somebody typed in, and so now we can just say, do the two groups have the same mean, or are they different? Okay. Now you could do do things, and you can just ask, you know, what's the mean of group one, and what's the mean of group two? Okay. But you don't even have to do that. You can just say R, do a t-test and compare group one with group two. You do t dot test, and you do group one, group two. Uh, and boom, it goes. Okay. And so here, uh, you'll notice it calculates a test statistic. Okay. If you did this yourself, you would get the same test statistic. Right. And uh, and here, how many degrees <laughs> of freedom will we count? We would see one, two, three. We see one, two, three, four, five, six in group one and five in group two we would have said 6 plus 5 is 11, minus 2 gives me 9 degrees of freedom, okay? Um, the true degrees of freedom is 8.451. How do we have a fractional degrees of freedom? We, we, we can, okay? And so our, our degrees of freedom is actually 8.451, but when we approximate, we use 9, and that's always generally going to overshoot the, uh, the exact degrees of freedom. And it calculates the p-value right here, okay? And it says the p-value is 0 0.04543, okay? So based on this, you can make a conclusion whether or not you want to reject the null hypothesis or not, okay? So at this point, what would you do? Would you reject or not reject if you use a 5%? Reject. So if your <coughs> decision line was at 5%, your p-value is smaller than 5%, so you would reject the null hypothesis, and you would conclude that there's a difference between them. Okay? And here it says the alternative. Um, so the null hypothesis for all of these is that the group means are the same, 
and here it tells you the alternative is that the true difference in mean is not equal to zero. Okay? So that's what it's saying. Now, if we wanted to do a directional test, okay, I can specify that. So here, if I want to say um, the option for uh, direction, you can say alternative is two-sided less or greater. Okay? It defaults to a two-sided alternative, but I could say the alternative is equal to less. Okay? So less always refers to is group one to mean less than group two. Okay? So here our null hypothesis is that the two means have this, uh, two groups have the same mean, and the alternative is that um, the mean, of the population that corresponds to group one is less than the mean of the population that corresponds to group two. And that's what this would state. All right. So if I ran this, what would happen to my p-value? Divide by two. <coughs> what do you think? Okay, well, let's see. Ooh, no. Here, my p-value is 0.9773, okay? So again, you have to remember, don't forget to check directionality, okay? And when you check directionality, you will see that the mean of group 1 is much bigger than the mean of group 2. So would we have any evidence to support the alternative? Here, the alternative is that the two drip true difference in means is less than zero, meaning that group one is smaller um, than group two. And the answer is no. We would have no evidence of that, and that's why our p-value is not half of it. It's much bigger, okay? So don't forget to check directionality. I had a question, I think I had a question like this on the final, and a lot of people got that one wrong, but I don't think that was my fault. <laughs> Okay, and then so here, if we did um, greater, this is where you would get the p-value is half of what we had originally, okay? There is our p-value. So our, our first one where we had the double-sided is that the p-value is 0.045, okay? And here now we see that the p-value is half, okay? And that's because here, the directionality of the alternative matches the uh, uh, what our data supports. Okay. Our data supports the idea that uh, this, is, this is larger than that. Okay. All right, you'll notice it also gives us a 95% confidence interval. Okay. Now it does one-sided confidence intervals. Okay, you can see. Um, the one-sided confidence intervals go uh, off to negative infinity or positive infinity. <laughs> but the one that you're used to, and it's the only one that I've technically taught in this class, although the one-sided ones aren't that much more complicated, the ones that you're used to is this thing, okay? And so if we made a 95% confidence interval, we would say that the true mean difference between uh, the mean of population 1 and population 2 is between 2.47 and 190.79, okay? That's what we would say. I'm 95% confident that the true mean difference is between here and here, okay? So based on this confidence interval, what would our conclusion be? Do we have evidence of a difference or do we, or don't we? Yeah. We would say zero is not within the interval, okay? Zero is barely outside of it, but it's not within the interval, so we don't have evidence of a difference, okay? Um, what do you think would happen if I made a 96% confidence interval? It might include zero. Do you think it would include zero, or do you think it wouldn't include? Okay, so 99% will probably include zero. 96%, okay. Let's see what happens. It does include zero, okay. So just 
just the difference. So default is to 95, 96%. So if I wanted to just be one extra bit of confident, I couldn't be, okay? I, I would get, get this, okay? Notice this p-value here. This p-value is 0 0.04543, okay? So if I picked this very strange level of confidence, exactly this, but here I'm getting something very, very, pretty much at zero, okay? And there's a, there's this very interesting, or not very interesting, but the, there's a, a confidence interval and a hypothesis test with a, a two-sided hypothesis test are basically two sides of the same point, okay? And, and, and we'll, uh, we'll talk about this in a, in a moment. We'll, uh, uh, we'll probably take a break and we'll talk about it afterwards. So, um, yeah, so our p-value is just under 5%, okay, but it's bigger than 4%. So because it's less than 5%, if I made a 95% confidence interval, I would have evidence of a difference, okay? But because it's greater than 4%, when I make a 96% confidence interval, I don't have evidence of a difference. Maybe that's confusing, maybe that makes sense. We'll talk about it uh, in a little bit more detail here, okay? Because they're, they're, um, they work uh, very closely together. So anyway, um, all of this work that we have to do on the board, we can also do very quickly with R, just by typing in a few short commands, okay? Um, but yeah, you guys have to learn how to do it by hand. And make sure you understand everything. But, um, but yeah, uh, our computers, computers are very powerful and they can, they can help you, but Again, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, you can always just type things in the machine, and it'll give you something, and it could be the completely wrong thing, okay? So, um, with great power comes great responsibility, mm -hmm. so. Um, okay, anyway, let's, uh, let's take a break. We'll talk more about hypothesis testing, confidence intervals, and all of that good stuff.